Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the, this webinar based around the Media and Art and Design Department at Barnet and Southgate College. Uh, my name is Greg Haynes. I'm the Head of Faculty for uh, Business, IT and Creative Studies and I'll be presenting this uh, talk today about the Art and Design and Media Department. Uh, my background is in media, graphic design and web design so I, I kind of I know this area very well. Uh, just to let you know how this will run, I've got a presentation that I'm going to be talking to you for maybe about 15 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, please just put them in the Q&A uh, box at the side of side of your screen, and we will answer them at the end of the, the presentation. If there's anything that I can't answer directly, we will get answers back to, to people following this. Uh, okay, so just a brief introduction to the Media and Art and Design Department. They are based at the Wood Street campus, which is in High Barnet. Uh, and there's two main areas of study, which is media and art and design. Now, there are specialist courses within each of these uh, areas. Uh, and I'll be go going through each of them and showing you some examples of some of the work and what's involved in each of those courses. Uh, they're all based around uh, the, let's say, the Wood Street campus, which has specialist facilities for each of these. Okay, so if we move to the uh, first area, which is art and design, we actually offer courses in art and design at level one, level two, level three, and above, which is uh, a pre-degree program, which is the foundation in art and design. Now, this is based on uh, where you're currently uh, studying, what your current uh, education level is at, what qualifications you have, and what kind of level of artwork or other work you have to show. Now, starting at level one, level one would be the equivalent of maybe the first year of a GCSE level. So if, for instance, you, you left school and your GCSEs weren't quite at, at the, the grade threes and fours, then you may want to start at level one or level two. The entry criteria for that is four GCSEs at grade one to two. For each of these qualifications, you'll need to bring in uh, a portfolio of work or share a portfolio portfolio of work with us. Historically, we've in previous years, we've ha actually had people come into the college with their portfolio of work, sit with the tutors, meet with the tutors, have a chat about the work. What we've been doing with that uh, over the recent weeks is we've been doing that online. So we've been using Teams to do those interviews. Uh, so you actually get to meet and discuss uh, the course and uh, what you'll be doing on the course and which level of course is suitable for you with the actual tutors who will be delivering it. Uh, level two art and design, that is for students who may have just, just missed out on the, the grade fours at GCSE uh, or who are not particularly experienced with art and design but actually want to go into the art and design world so your portfolio may be uh, more limited that, than others. So that actually gives everybody the grounding to build up on to kind of start looking at the different aspects of art and design build up a portfolio to then move on to the to the level three qualifications. Now, the level three uh, in art and design is a two year course. It to to get onto this course, you would need to have five GCSEs grade four and above. Obviously, we understand the way GCSEs are being graded this year might mean that a strong portfolio of work and slightly not hitting those grades. We may look at uh, progressing people onto a level three directly. Uh, so it's a two year course. In the first year, you'll be studying a range of different uh, skills and techniques. So just listed below there is, you would look at materials, processes and skills. So you would actually start to learn how to do various screen printing and mono printing techniques. You would look at uh, using our 3D workshop, which has uh, facilities for creating sculptures, creating um, models of architecture, it would, you look at wood, metal, plastic, there is facilities for uh, 3D printing and uh, laser cutting and laser engraving there. And you would learn all of those types of skills. You would have a look at problem solving because a lot of art design media is about solving problems. You, you would be working from a, an assignment brief and with that assignment brief, you would have to come up with a solution that answers that, that question. Uh, so you would look at 2D solving problem solving, which includes things like illustration, graphic design, fine art, and so on. 3D problem solving would be looking at sculpture, product design, architecture. Uh, Time-based problem solving would be based around 
uh, looking at how your work sits within a time-based environment. So is it a piece of artwork which degrades over time? Is it something which looks at uh, animation, illustration, which moves? So therefore, you're looking at time. Is it video? Uh, is it a specific site-based piece, which people will only see for a short while? So there's a lot of different things with that. Uh, you'll also look at contextual research. Contextual research covers uh, historical uh, research. It covers uh, current practice. It co covers looking at existing artists, exi existing designers, uh, and kind of how they sit within the current world based on what they've done previously. Uh, communication skills. So you would also look at how you communicate with both images and words. And it's, it's it's fairly broad in, in what you would do with that because that could look at your presentation skills. It could look at how you convey a message through your artwork. Uh, in the second year, you then progress on to using all of the skills that you've learned in the first year and showing how you specialize in the second year. In the first year, you would look at all different aspects of art and design. In the second year, you may choose that you would like to specialize in illustration, or you would like to specialize in graphic design, or you would like to specialize in architecture. So within that, in the second year, you would tailor the work that you're doing so that you're actually uh, supporting any progression routes that you might want to go on to, should it be university, uh, apprenticeships, or directly into the workplace. Uh, so you would look at the creative process, so how you would work through an assignment and start to create assignments yourself. Uh, the creative practice, so actually putting that that planning in place, and industry practice, so you would start to have a look at what it takes to work in the industry that you're training for. So whether that be as a fine artist, whether that be as a designer, whether that be as an illustrator or an architect, and so on. Uh, the areas that people do tend to go into and progress on to, which usually means going on to university, but not in, a, not in all cases, is students might go to study fine art, sculpture, illustration, graphic design, textiles, photography, printmaking, architecture, product design, ceramics, animation, and filmmaking. Now, that isn't an exhaustive list. There is lots of different other aspects that people might go into from that. And as I say, some people may go into apprenticeships. So you might go into a fashion design apprenticeship, or you might go into uh, be a photography assistant somewhere. Uh, so that's the overall view of the art and design. There is one other course there, which also says level three art and design. This is a, a specific uh, course for students who are 18 and above, which is a foundation year art and design. This is a pre-degree university progression course, uh, which would be for one year. The entry criteria is the same, but if you're over 21, you may, may need you may not necessarily have to have those GCSEs. It may just be based on your portfolio of work, uh, but that is a, an intensive course which speeds up the process of the of the, the level three qualification but as i say that's for 18 plus students uh, we have a couple of examples of some of the work that uh, students produced when they were doing uh, work this year this some of this work has actually been produced whilst at college before march when we all uh, started to work from home and since march so students have been continuing to work on uh, assignments after so when they when they went home and you can see examples there from level one art and design level two art and design level three year one and level three year two so the the standard of work varies obviously as the as the level of qualification increases but the actual level of commitment is what what we're looking for from students because not everybody is is really good at every area some might be good at one area some might be good at another area and as you progress through the the levels of course that that tends to uh, improve across the board. Okay, so next up, let me click on that. Let's see whether this skips to the next level, next slide. Seems to be stuck at the moment. I've skipped across a few. OK, so the next uh, main area of study is media. And again, we do media at different levels. We have level two and level three. 
we don't do a level one. There, there is a specific level one course within our foundation learning, which is a progression to IT and media. So if, if you're coming to the college and you're looking for a level two in media, it doesn't sit within this department, but there is a media-based course for you to do. Uh, so actually with media, we, we've split it into two main areas. One is creative media production and the other is computer animation. There is a games element to that as well. Creative media production is predominantly film and television production. Uh, so you would look at the different ways that uh, film and television production takes place. Uh, and the computer animation and the games, obviously, you're, you'd be looking at uh, how animation, both 2D and 3D animation, is produced. So the entry criteria for these are similar. Well, they're the same as the level two and the level three for art and design, but with these, the the interview is slightly different because you don't necessarily have to provide a portfolio of work but we would uh, for interview purposes we would ask you to produce a, a small piece of writing and in the case of the animation and and the games courses some drawing because there is elements of drawing within those uh, so the, the creative media production you would look at different methods of media so how media works within uh, within the world so you'd look at social media you look at film television radio uh, advertising marketing and all different types of media you look at design and skills because whether it is uh, filming with a camera or whether it's drawing illustrating and put and animating you would still need to look at the the art direction that goes within that which looks at how you would uh, frame uh, a shot how you would uh, add sound and lighting to that shot. Production techniques, so you, you would learn the technical aspects of camera work, you would learn the, test, uh, the aspects of audio recording, uh, using the equipment, so using the cameras, the tripods, the, the microphones, uh, the audio recorders, etc. cetera. Uh, then understanding an audience, because that's one major thing in, in all aspects of media is that you know who you're talking to and you know what message you're wanting to get across. Contextual research is similar to art and design, but obviously the focus here is on games, animation, film, television, uh, and all the different aspects there. Uh, expl again, exploring audio production, exploring visual production, and exploring interactive media. With interactive media, that actually covers, and this also applies to uh, the art design courses, you would, throughout the, the years that you're with us, for however many that is, whether you're progressing from level one or all the way to level three, or just joining us at level three, you would start to keep a, a personal reflective log. And that's normally done through either a website or a blog that you keep yourself, uh, where you reflect on the work that you've done, the, the techniques that you're learning, what you still think you need to learn, what you could have done better, and so on. So you would look at how to produce an interactive media portfolio uh, and a personal project. Now, again, with the art and design and same as with this, at the end of your academic studies with us, predominantly at level three, second year, you would write your own assignment. So you would think about what aspects of the, the industry you're wanting to go into. You may want to go as a games designer, you may want to do character development. So you would write an assignment where you create your own characters for your own game. If you were a wanting to go and be a TV producer, then you would produce a, uh, a piece of uh, possibly documentary or short film where and you would work with a team that you you select to produce that. Uh, so again, we've got a list of kind of areas that people go into. So into TV and film directors, editors, script writers, animators, uh, VFX artists from animation or from media. Uh, character designers, storyboard artists, because you storyboarding is a key aspect of all these all these media uh, courses. A 3D modeler, compositor, or texture artist. And again, there are so many different jobs in this area. The creative industries. At the last report that that we had was the just under the financial services in terms of income in the UK, because particularly. When you're looking at something like uh, visual effects companies, the, London is the hub of the visual effects industry across the world. Uh, so most of the VFX companies across the across the world have an office in London. They don't have an office necessarily in New York or in Sydney or in Los Angeles, but they nearly all have an office in London. So it's it's a mass grow area, massive growth area in the UK. Uh, okay, some examples of 
some of the work here. Obviously, these are just still images. We ha these are either from animations or from uh, films that students have produced. So you can see from level two computer game, uh, computer animation and games, level three computer animation, level three creative media, and level two creative media. So there's a there's a range of work that's produced for those courses. Uh, then we have across the media and art and design areas, we have some more specialized courses at level two and level three. So uh, we have a level two in fashion business retail, uh, which is based around kind of looking at fashion trends and uh, how re the retail industry in the fashion world works. Now, a lot of students from this may choose to go on to do a, a business or marketing qualification following this, or they go into the fashion design course that, that we have. Uh, now, it says level two computer game design and development. That's actually a typo. That should be a level three computer game design and development. This is similar to the computer animation course. So you're looking at two-dimensional and three-dimensional design, but you're, you will be developing this based on producing computer games. So either 2D platform type games or 3D first person games, uh, multiplayer games, online gaming, uh, mobile gaming, and so on. So you would learn about all different aspects of that type of industry. Uh, level three fashion. So this is a fashion design and production course. So you would learn about how to research trends, research ideas for fashion uh, collections, and you would then learn about how the how to produce all of those things, different types of techniques, different types of equipment, sewing machines, uh, industrial irons, uh, knitting machines, and, and all the technical aspects. And then this usually com culminates with a fashion show uh, at the end of the second year. First years take part in that as well. They also, midway through the year, take part in a, uh, a live fashion show at Brent Cross Shopping Centre. So it actually puts your puts your fashion designs in front of people who are out there to buy clothes. Uh, we have a level three photography course. So this is a specialist photography course. So if you know you want to go into the photography industry as a journalist or as a, a fashion photographer or as a food photographer or stills photographer, uh, then this is the type of course that you might want to do. You would learn about all aspects of photography, uh, composition, lighting, studio photography, uh, reportage photography, all different aspects in there. Uh, and level three, architecture and product design. So if you're wanting to go into specifically 3D design uh, and architecture, then this is the type of course. So you would learn about 3D modeling, you'd learn about uh, 3D structures and uh, different architectural techniques. Uh, so again, these are specialist courses with focus content and dedicated facilities for each of those. Uh, specialisms uh, and from this you might go into being a designer game creator modeler architect character developer stylist journalist again so many different uh, areas of the industry that you can go into from this uh, and obviously as you're learning all of these you may choose to go into just the theoretical side of it so you may want to go into being a, a fashion journalist or a computer game design journalist or all different aspects of that uh, and then we have some examples of artwork that students have done uh, for this so with fashion business and retail looking at different as aspects of that photography game design etc now if you would like to see some more uh, examples of this work we we would normally ha invite everybody into an exhibition that we have at the wood street campus but unfortunately we, we weren't able to do that this year so what we've done is we've put together a an online exhibition uh, and the, the address for that is www.bscexhibition2020.com. Uh, and that will allow you to view uh, far more artwork from all of the different courses that we run at Barnet and Southgate College. So you'll see examples of uh, games design. You'll see examples of fine art. You'll see examples of illustration. You can view the videos. You can view the animations all on that particular website. OK, so that's uh, most of the or all of the the things that I was going to present to you today. I'm going to leave that up on screen. So if anybody wants to make a note of the uh, the web address, and I have a few questions that have come in. So where have we got? So if we go through the top, so we've got 
Uh, how has COVID affected the way that the courses are going to be delivered? That's a, that's a good one, and that's something we're, we are working on at the moment. We are currently looking at how we timetable classes and how we make sure that we're making sure that everybody is safe within the college. Uh, so we are, since the 20th, we've continued teaching. Um, we've continued working with students on a one-to-one -one basis and in, in groups through uh, Microsoft Teams. And from that, students have been able to work remotely, uh, photograph their own work, put that up on online, and tutors have been able to give them feedback about how to improve what, what different aspects they need to add to their work. And you'll, like say, with that exhibition, you'll see examples of that. Uh, so we are currently working on timetabling to make sure that we minimize the the numbers of students in the in the college at one time and make sure that everybody gets access to all of the facilities that they need to do to do the course. Uh, so we've got, I'm interested in art and design courses. So if you're actually interested in reading a little bit more about the courses, if you go onto the exhibition website, there is a link directly to the, the college website and the courses that you can apply for. I think that my advice would be if you're interested in in knowing more about individual courses. If you do an application for a course, you'll have an interview with a tutor and that tutor can, can then discuss that, that specific course with you. Uh, for the art and design courses, what will we mainly be using? Computer, paper, etc. Now, really that depends on uh, the specialism that you go into. You were, predominantly it's been done through uh, paper, max, uh, the 3D workshop, so different materials in the 3D workshop, screen printing, photography. So you will start off by using all different aspects of art and design materials. And then as you get closer to the, the end of year two of the level three, you'll specialize into whichever aspect you want to do. So if you want to go into fine art, but want to do that digitally, you will base yourself on a computer, but you would, you'd still be using sketchbooks to, to develop your ideas. Uh, so, Next one, we've got one from Mohammed. Uh, what does A-level media course consist of? The A-level media course is different to this because that actually sits within the A-level department. Uh, it's actually the same tutors. So it's our tutors from the media department who teach that course. And that is uh, split into three main, well, two main areas. One area is media theory. So you'll be looking at film theory and uh, possibly journalism theory, radio theory. And then there is also a practical element to that where you would look at uh, the technical sides of filming, at, uh, scripting, uh, getting people to perform filming. So that could be either a documentary or a drama. There, With the A-level media, there is an exam element to it with the, uh, the UAL qualifications that we cross, run across the whole media and art and design department. There are no, no exams in these. The, the way you will be assessed is continuously through assignments. Uh, you will be able to build up and get formative assessment throughout the, the first year and throughout the second year. And then at the end of each year, you would have one, uh, one assignment, which normally would last around about two months to produce. And that would be where your exam, uh, your, your grade would sit. So it, it's not really an exam, but it, it will give you a final grade for the qualification. On the production courses, how do you help us get a job in the TV or film industry? Well, we have, uh, links to people who work in the film and TV industry. You'll see from uh, on the website that we, for our second year level three students, we've held uh, an awards judging. So each of the groups had three students nominated for an award and they were judged by people in the film and TV industry and the art and design industry. So one of the judges was currently based in Wellington, but is uh, lived in, in the UK, well, is from the UK and lived in the UK for a long time. And is currently working on uh, assignments for Weta, the visual effects company that created the Lord of the Rings films and things like that. But he's also worked on various Marvel films and Star Wars films and things. So so we, we've got links directly into those the industry and we, we make sure that those people from the industry come and speak to the students uh, so that we get them to be able to understand those uh, the needs of of the industry and what kind of work you're doing and how that's relevant to the industry. Uh, when doing filmmaking, what kind of equipment do we learn to use, like cameras, editing software, lighting? So we have in the media department we have a green screen studio. 
So that is set up with uh, LED lighting systems so they can be controlled from a control desk, the same as the uh, vision mixing desk. So it's set up like a live studio. So you would learn how to use that. You would learn how to use different levels of camera, starting with a camera on a phone. Uh, then you will have uh, HD camcorders. We would have 4K camcorders. We have lo larger format production cam uh, cameras. We have different types of microphones, so boom mics or radio mics that you would normally see on TV with somebody pinned to the lapel. You would also have uh, different uh, lighting equipment that can be booked out. Uh, you would The software that we're currently using is Final Cut Pro, which is a Mac-based piece of software. But we also have, all of the tutors are also aware of Avid and uh, Adobe Premiere, so you would learn how to use that kind of stuff as well, uh, and different times types of uh, audio software. So there's quite a lot of different things that you would learn how to use. Uh, so then the next question we've got uh, is, I want to make clothes and be in the fashion. What kind of course would be best for me? I think if you're looking at entering at level three, then the fashion, the specialist fashion course will be the best in, uh, course to look into. Again, if you make an application, then you'll speak to the tutors directly. Uh, we have one uh, from David, who has worked with us for Greg. Hope you're well. I may have missed a question on COVID. Is the plan to run courses in college as of September or virtually? We are currently planning to have elements of in-college delivery as well as some online delivery which would actually minimize the number of students at any one time within the building but we're, we've learned from lots of experience over the last three months about how or which elements have worked really successfully online and so we're making sure that any, any of those elements we can we're looking at how to do those online but we're also making sure that students are able to access the specialist facilities in the building okay uh, what are the class sizes this is uh, my final question that we've got so far. So if anybody's got any more and want to add them, we've got two minutes left. Uh, class sizes, they average at around 16 to 17 students. Media class sizes are slightly bigger because we will get, uh, because we have rooms, specialist Mac studios that fit around about 20 to 21 people. Obviously, we're looking at how we need to deal with social distancing. So we're there, there's still, uh, elements of how many people will physically be in a room at one time, but we are, the group sizes would be around about uh, around about 18, 19, 20 are, are media, and around about 16 to 17 in art and design because of the the physical space. Uh, one from Igor: How long until we get notified that we are accepted on into the college? Okay, so if you've already had an interview then you should be notified within five to ten working days because we get as the tutors interview, because I'm interviewing for the games course at the moment, as the tutors interview, we feed that back to customer services and then they feed that back to, to you as applicants. So that should be fairly, fairly quick. If you've not heard back, if you just contact uh, the main reception and ask to speak to somebody in customer services, they'd be able to give you feedback on that. Okay, I feel like I've been talking for a long time now. Uh, so that's all of the questions. So if there's no more, then, uh, like I say, if you want to go and have a look at the BSC Exhibition 2020 website, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, there is a con there is contact details on there, so if you'd like to email about any information, but as I say, the, there's links directly onto apl the application site. So if there's no further questions, I thank you for taking part and coming along. Thank you.